Just Outdoors is brought to you in part by the following community supporters. Jervelin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervelin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervelin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Meds One Emergency Medical Services. Meds One provides mobile advanced life support, community paramedic primary care services, and education, event medical support, and consulting. Preserving lives and improving health. In an emergency, always call 911. This program is sponsored in part by Brood Awakenings Coffee House. Brood Awakenings is a green business with the mission to be a cafe where a person can eat every day and be healthy. Nurture your inner being at Brood Awakenings, downtown Grand Rapids on Highway 2 East, across from the courthouse. My name is Tom Chapin and welcome to Just Outdoors. This is a program to bring you the bare facts about the woods, the waters, and the wildlife of Itasca County. Today we have a special program and we're actually on location at a public access in Itasca County. And this program is for all your boaters and fishermen because uh, this is what's coming up, this is what's here. We're going to be talking about AIS or aquatic invasive species and what you have to do in order to put your boat in and take your boat out and all the inspection that's taking place you've heard of at the uh, at the public accesses around the county and in the state um, this is a program that is brand new in itasca county right now it's a county coordinated program along with the state the state does the inspections at the accesses but now itasca county is going to do inspections at the accesses and we have a coordinator of that program with us, Bill Grantis. Good morning. Good morning, Bill Grantis. Good morning. And you are the coordinator for this countywide AIS program, Aquatic Invasive Species, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Terrific. We're actually going to launch a boat, we're going to take the boat out, we're going to show folks exactly what is really demanded of them now by the law in order to be in compliance with the uh, regulations that says you cannot transport any of these species. And we're talking about um, animal species and plant species, aren't we? Correct. Yeah. So tell us a little about yourself, Bill, about uh, how long you've been around Itas County and how do you happen to acquire this particular job? Um, my name is Bill Grantius and I live out on Sugar Lake. I'm blessed to live uh, there. I moved here in 1999. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I was in the right place at the right time. I was doing some volunteer work with the Itasca Water Legacy Partnership uh, in conjunction with uh, Itasca County and the DNR uh, through some grants and some cooperative agreements last summer mm -hmm. doing an AIS watercraft inspection, the first one for Itasca County. And we had between four and six employees and we only worked weekends and holidays. Okay. But we were able to get 1,600 inspections in. So okay. uh, then the state said, hey, states, so counties, here's $10 million divided amongst the counties. Uh, and then Itasca County's share for last year, which ends this July, from July to July, was $256,000. Okay. So the county said, um, we need to get the right people on this, people that have experience doing this. So they came to the Itasca Water Legacy Partnership and also the Itasca County Cooperative Invasive Species Management Area. We call it CISMA for short. Um, they have a program, uh, they are basically charged with all invasive species within Itasca County, coordinating efforts for that. My part of it is the aquatics. I'm just concerned with the aquatic invasive species. Okay. Um, so as it, it came about, as we had more town hall meetings, brought the public in, had the DNR, the Forestry Service, we had some conservation officers, all met and said, let's do this right, how do we do it? 
um, it came up that people agreed. We need one person working full time that they're watching over this. Uh, I'm not really anybody's boss on this, but I coordinate efforts between um, six other priority areas. Well, anytime we have. you have that many people working for you in different areas, you're going to need a coordinator. You got to have that. Absolutely, that's, that's important. Okay, this program is going to be for everybody that owns a boat. It, this should be, right. most people are already doing this. Yes, I'd be are. willing to bet, I'd be willing to bet. There's a lot of misconceptions about this right. and we'll clear that up today. And this is what we're gonna try to do is, uh, there's, there's a lot of people out there I think that own a boat, they're a little skeptical on the program, they don't know exactly what to do, especially if they only use a boat two or three times a year, this is for them particularly. And so this is what we're gonna show. Just exactly what's uh, required of mm -hmm. a person, and it's not a big deal. It's not. It's very easy. Okay. Once you use it, it is. It is. Uh, typically, it doesn't take much longer than the amount of time it would from when you leave your tow vehicle to pull your straps right. to take your bait right. from the vehicle to put it in. The inspection's done probably by the time you're done yeah. doing that. Okay. Let's let's talk a little bit about how important this is. What are we looking at here? Why, what are we trying to protect? Really what this boils down to is that we're trying to preserve our outdoor traditions for future generations. Aquatic invasive species, once they get into the water, they fundamentally change the makeup of a lake. If we want our grandchildren to be able to fish for the same fish we do in the same lakes in the same way, if I want to be able to have my granddaughter walk on my beach on Sugar Lake without having to wear shoes because of zebra mussels, mm -hmm. we all have to take personal responsibility and, and get uh, form some very good habits, and it's simple, clean, drain, dry. Clean, drain, dry, and that's, that's the big thing. That's what you see on signs all over. Yep. And this is, this is a very simple thing to do. Uh, when you think about it, clean, drain, dry, that may only take five minutes. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, and you're gonna explain all those particular parts of that. Um, the thing is, we're talking about uh, invasive species in Itasca County. There are lakes in Itasca County that already have some invasive species, aren't there? Yes, we have lakes that have both uh, plants uh, in them, right. and then we have some that have uh, invertebrates, such yeah. as uh, zebra mussels in them. Um, those are the Sand Lake area, the Winnie area. We actually have Eurasian water milfoil here in Grand Rapids. Right. There's um, curly leaf our curly leaf pondweed is here in, in uh, uh, Pakegama. Uh, most aquatic invasive species plants are controllable. It's extremely expensive to control them though. It's always, always, always more effective and more cost efficient to keep something out than it is to try and take it out instead. Now the zebra mussel is one you're targeting pretty heavy. Here, oh sure. yes. We have examples in the state where they have pretty much destroyed the lakes too to a certain degree, haven't they? What, what does the zebra mussel do? The, the, the zebra mussel we don't want in lakes around Itasca County. No, and we do not. Tell us why. Well, there are no natural predators to them, so basically okay. they eat and reproduce. Right. Uh, an adult zebra mussel can lay a million eggs in one year. Uh, a zebra mussel sits on the bottom of the lake or the boat mm -hmm. or the, 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 the pipe where it's attached itself. And it's, it's a filter feeder. It sits there and filters up to a liter of water a day. And it's taking the plankton out of the water. The good news is you get a little lake that's cleaner. Um, the bad news is you have light that's going further down, so you have weed growth that's growing where it's not usually supposed to be. Uh, and they're taking out the bottom of the food chain, uh, plankton, where the uh, feeder fish would be eating. So the feeder fish populations tend to die off. Millax, uh, DNR mm -hmm. study last year was released. Zebra mussels and spiny water fleas combined, adult populations were attributed to a 60% drop in plankton levels in millax. 60%. It changes the whole dramatically the biology of the lake. It? it does, it yeah. does, and then it bounces around, different yeah. species uh, uh, die out, some other come in. It changes the natural makeup of what we have now. Okay, so that's what we're after. That's, that's the main one, but there's a lot of other types of uh, invasive species that uh, can be hauled along besides that. Uh, yeah. Particularly the plants. Right? Yes. Well, well, the, 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 the zebra mussels and spiny water fleas are particularly nasty because in their infant forms you cannot see them with the naked eye. They're that small. That's right. why it's so important to drain all the water off your boat. Mm -hmm. The plants, it's so simple. All you need, pardon my gloves, all you need is a piece about that long of uh, Eurasian water milfoil, um, um, flowering rush, curly leaf pondweed. That's all it takes for it to go from one lake to another. 
So that's why that's where the 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 clean comes in in removing all plants, uh, all mud. You have nothing, and you really have to pay attention to your trailers. Uh, most people see it on their on their their prop, and they'll take it off. But you got to look underneath that trailer okay. too. Just because we're in northern Minnesota doesn't mean we're immune from any of this, does it? No. A lot of these things that are in southern Minnesota, Twin Cities area, can certainly live up in this area also. Population centers. Um, okay. Aquatic invasive species always follow where man yeah. goes, where people go. It's not spread by birds. It's right. not spread by right. turtles or right. frogs. Uh, a lot of it's, it's out spread. There, so. Well, yeah, it's spread yeah. by man because if you look at the spread, it follows transportation corridors. Okay, so yeah. we got. A situation here where we're trying to stop this growth into this area. We know we're trying to slow it down, so slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, some people say they have an excuse, you know, oh, I'm not too into this because we're going to get it anyway. Not necessarily true, is it? I don't believe so, and you are correct. That is that is a common feeling among some people. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to slow down the spread, Tom, so that scientists can find a genetic or a biological cure for it. Um, case in point, zero mussels. They're saying that we may have a genetic uh, cure based on DNA that targets just zebra mussels, right. eight to ten years. So if we can if we can hold off, there might be a scientific cure for some of these things. Tom, it's, it's we'll what we have now that is on our radar, we have in the county and in surrounding counties mm -hmm. is scary. Yeah. What's even right. worse are those invasive species that we don't know about yet, okay. that we haven't developed ways and methods of dealing with them at all. Okay. That's why we need to learn the good habits of clean, drain, mm -hmm. dry. So really this whole program is about education. That is, that's what our inspectors do. They're, they're here to educate. You, you've got a, uh, a group of inspectors that are gonna take a look at a boat here. And you have these inspectors a lot around the county all week, don't you? Yes, we're particularly on the weekends. We're very fortunate because of the generosity of the Task County and the county commissioners mm -hmm. setting up this program, uh, and the AIS Technical Committee uh, setting aside 46 percent of all the money just yeah. for prevention of these inspections. So yeah, we have uh, inspectors working full time all around the county, and I've got the best people because they're, they're asked yeah. to work on weekends sometimes yes, yes. and give up on holidays. These are volunteer people. And when it's 30 degrees outside and raining, <laughs> yeah, right. they're here. You know, and the thing is, if people come along and they see these inspectors with the bright yellow jackets, mm -hmm. um, there shouldn't be any fear here. There should be more support than anything. They're here to teach primarily. Right. This and they're also trying to make sure that what we put into our lakes and take right. out yeah. are clean. And once they, once they go through it one time, it's just a, Easy situation. We had almost 1,600 inspections last year, and there was only two problems Isn't out of 1,600. Isn't that amazing? And contrary to some people wishing they were from not this area or another yep. state, they were all from Minnesota, yeah. mostly. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a boat. We're going to launch a boat, and then we'll bring a boat in, and we'll take a look at what your crew does and how they do the inspection on this thing. And I'll go right along with you and ask some questions on this thing. Well, um, we're lucky. We've got one of my top inspectors. He's also a trainer. Uh, and we also have a volunteer that was, lives here on, on uh, Pekegama Lake. Mm -hmm. And the volunteer basically helps by holding a clipboard and checking off responses. Because yeah. you, you won't even know that you're actually being asked questions sometimes, because which is so good, you yeah. don't really know. His name is Rich Anderson. Yes, Rich Anderson. And uh, it's good to keep, you have to have somebody taking information down so you have a record of what you've done. Well just think about yeah. it. If, if I were talking to you right now and I had yeah. a questionnaire, I'd be doing this and I wouldn't mm -hmm. be focusing on the personal right. conversation that you and I are having right yeah. now. And that's that's so, the method that uh, um, Rich has absolutely so this whole system, how we're going to contain this in the future and when we look back on these days and we have been successful, it's going to be a lot of volunteer work that's put, put into this. Volunteer work is yeah. the only way to do it and it, it, it it's going to take a lot of people. Lakes. Everybody has to do it. Everybody has to take personal responsibility okay. for it. And simple, clean, drain, dry. Okay, let's take a look. Let's do that. Howdy. Hey. I'm Rich. We're doing aquatic invasive species on the boat um, before every launch and after you head out. So here's what we're looking for. Let me start off and look from the bow and look to see if there's anything gritty on there, any weeds, etc. You can look down on the rollers and see if there's any reeds as well. Um, no vegetation, no zebra mussels, no villagers, nothing on there. But look through, like right there, you have a little leaf down there, and we'll, we'll pull that off before you put into the water. Um, and probably just came off while you're going down the road, but nothing can go into the water. Right. 
and then you just move on down. Now, have you been on any other water recently? Nope, first time out this year. Okay, um, when you're prepping your boat, could we have you pull the live wells just so we can see there's nothing in there? And okay. You're bringing any bait in? Yep, I am. Okay, and we're looking at rollers underneath here as well. Okay, the rollers, the rollers are going to be able to catch a lot more things than... The, the rollers going to snag up weeds, weeds particularly if they in. came from another lake. Right. Now, even though this is his first time putting in, if you're in the habit of doing it right all the way through every time, mm -hmm. you don't have a problem. Right. But you're particularly interested in people coming from another lake, aren't you? Um, uh, especially yeah. from the Twin Cities, maybe, in that area. Well, actually, anywhere, because anywhere. if you teach them the right habit, even if they're coming in and out of their own lake only, yeah. if you teach them the right habits, the one time they go to another lake, they'll have it built in. Okay. No, he's got a plug. Yep, you have to come, going down the road, the plug has to be out. And you come back here and look in the plug itself, look to see that there's nothing around there. Now, Velger zebra mussels, they're a filter feeder. So they like to sit right around the plug, all access points, all ports. So you really look at that carefully. Okay. And he's dropped his lower unit, which you should do to drain any water out of the front cavity plate. Okay. All right, so you do that before you put in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And when you exit, well, and... We'll talk about that. Right, but, but it's uh, the same deal. You have to drain the water okay. to go down the road. All right. And it's a ticket if you don't. Mm -hmm. These are the areas that are, are really primaries because this is where the flow is coming. So weeds and villagers will get stuck on this. Um, they'll attach there and just feed on everything that goes by. So they really like it. Then you're also looking at your intakes on your motors because again, that's a flow area and every area that's a, a tight turn on the motor that could be in the water, check and feel it. Do it by feel, not just look because the villagers are microscopic. You can't see them, but you can feel them. They'll feel like 80 grit sandpaper. And if it's road sand, it just comes right off. Yeah. If it's villagers, it stays. Now, if this, if this boat and motor sure. were sitting for a couple of weeks, sitting out of the water out of in the water, water for a couple of weeks. Then everything should be dead. Okay. Um, but it, if it comes in and a boater says it's been for a couple of weeks, for all we know, it's really been four or five days. If we find something that's an invasive species, mm -hmm. it has to be decontaminated. Okay. All right. Um, talk about that. And that could be just wipe it off. Right. It could be a weed, mm -hmm. but it could be something serious too. Decontamination is can be very simple. Oh, absolutely. Decontamination. When you use that big word, it can be just a matter of wiping we, we things did off, it drying things off. Earlier, where I just pulled a leaf off. Yeah. That, that was, was technically a, a decontamination, okay. where you remove the invasive, you remove the species, whatever right. vegetation, all of it. It okay. could be just that simple. Pull the weed off. All right. That's decontamination. If it's something along the lines of zebra mussel, it takes a little bit more. Okay. Actually, a lot. More. One more thing about transporting with a plug in. You cannot do that. No, the plug has to be out going down the road. Okay. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's coming from your cabin to the public access, it's on a road. It has to be out. So from now on in the state of Minnesota, no plugs in any boats being transported? Not until you're at a public land. Okay. Or at, at home yep. in your own driveway. What a change from five years ago. I know. <laughs> But, you know, it doesn't take long to get used to that. No, and it's actually quite easy. Most people just have it separate and exactly. sitting in their boat ready to go. Um, go ahead and put the plug in. Okay, he's going to put the plug in. And everything's pretty much been expected outside the boat here. Right, as I inspected from the bow to the stern, um, mm -hmm. I had another inspector going from the bow to the stern on the other side. Okay. Now, realistically, uh, any boater should do that inspection, not us. Okay because you should do it at every landing anyway, so you're not bringing anything in, whether there's an inspector there or not. Okay, now when she's recording, is she recording the person's name? No, no. Okay. Uh, what she reports down there is the tow vehicle, the license plate on it. Okay. Um, if it's my boat and you're transporting it, you're the one liable for it. Right, sure. You're, you're so it's the license plate. We're not recording a name. We're not trying to get okay. extra information from you. Um, if there is, again, let's use villagers or zebra mussels as mm -hmm. an example. If we do find something that needs a full decontamination, mm -hmm. not just removing a weed, then we also write down the, the boat number. Sure. 
Um, and then that goes through the DNR and the, it's a follow-up okay. procedure. So no requirement to give your name or anything? No, not at okay. all, not at all. Well, that's less invasive. I, I do like to know uh, what lake you came from mm -hmm. and where you might be going, sure. just so we can track any movement. If we sure. find out that a certain lake has an invasive species and it's known to and you came from that lake, mm -hmm. We want to look even more closely. Well, you might have information for that person, too. Absolutely. Or find important. out. Yeah. That they may not know all that. Or so they may be trying to go to a lake that yeah. you know has a bad landing right yeah. now, because yeah. we're at most of them. The more information transferred between the people, I think the better for everybody. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why volunteers are, are so yeah. handy, because Great. we can have a friendly conversation, mm -hmm. and they can get all the documentation that's needed mm -hmm. without it being a, a formal interview. OK. Now, when you put the boat in the water, <clears throat> do you, are you inspecting anything in the boat? Yes, um, we do. We okay. look for anchors, anchor lines, fishing rods and reels as far as the liner is concerned, and live wells, okay. and bait wells, and where they're bringing their bait from, bait buckets, etc. Okay. So now that we've come to the stern, we usually turn around, can you show me your live wells? Mm -hmm. So right now we're just going to check live wells just to make sure that there's no residual water in there from any previous place, and the plug is pulled which is important. That also is your, your plug going down the road. That's just as important in your live well, because if you get stopped for one and they see that that's in, that's technically another infraction. So all, all ways to drain have to be open and that's nice and bone dry. And that's what we're really looking for is for it to be as dry as possible. Uh, and at this point in time, you're ready to launch. Okay. So we'll launch the boat and we'll bring it back in. And we'll show, we'll show what the what process is with your crew. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, uh, here's an example of bringing a boat out of the water. Right, the same. They've been fishing all day. Same boat. It's kind okay. of a, a rainy, miserable day, so you can yep. expect there's going to be some water and, you know, yep. some weeds. And, and they've been around some of the bays uh, fishing. Uh, Possibly looking for some panfish and bass. And, well, uh, and while they're pulling out, mm -hmm. I can already see that there's some reeds, etc., hanging on the trailer. Okay. That's one of the most common spots for stuff to hang up. Right. If it's not on the boat, it'll get pinched between the boat yeah. and the trailer or ride on the trailer, particularly as weed growth yeah. increases. This is probably a bigger inspection than even putting the boat oh, in. Oh, this is this is where honestly, if you're going to have active live absolutely. aquatic species, right? Well. <laughs> For, for, for sure active and maybe not invasive, but certainly aquatic, aquatic yeah. will be on the boat. Right. And by law, nothing leaves the lake. Okay. I mean, you, obviously you can take your, your fish home, Sure. but you don't want to transport anything at this point that's natural. Okay, you got your crew working here now. Well, actually, um, here's the owner. He's already tying his straps on, so okay. that's important. And we come up, obviously we know the plug's in because he didn't sink out on a lake. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the keys here is to drop your lower unit down, not so far that you're going to rip the skag into the bottom. Some landings or some boats are much deeper, but drop it down significantly and you'll see how much water comes out of this lower unit. Okay. There you go. And if people just pulled up and set up for going down the road, that's transporting water. Now, if, if you're in a contaminated lake, let's say like Mille Lacs or sure. some of those, that's very important there, isn't it? That's very important isn't on that every lake. On that's what's going to be lake. transporting That That's one that's almost hidden that people always forget okay. about. All right. Um, so if you drop it down, and now the owner's removing the, the drain plug, so if there's mm -hmm. any water, it should be coming out. Yeah. Um, for boats that have bilge pumps, etc., you ask them to engage their bilge pumps so make sure, sure. all water comes out. Yeah. Your ballast, your wakeboard mm -hmm. boats, etc., mm -hmm. have them engage it. Those ballasts also have to be completely empty. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is an area where a lot of people might not think about it. Well, a lot of people at this point in time, they, they yeah. throw the straps on and they think they're ready yeah. to go down the road, and you're not. You're not. Okay. Well, let's continue here. Then. So, again, looking right here, we've got reeds hanging. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of thing that will absolutely get taken to the next lake mm -hmm. if you were lake hopping. Now, if he pulls out and he's going to be up dry for 10, 20 days, that may be your plan, but you may go fishing that afternoon. Mm -hmm. Everything goes through. If you do this part right here, your inspection coming in takes no time because it's already perfectly already clean. Done. You bet. 
Okay. So there's some weeds and and there's there's some more back things in hanging here. under there. Okay. And again, it only takes an extra minute or two. Mm -hmm. Now, for our demonstration, we're going through and doing things slow and methodically. But truthfully, while you're walking about around your boat, getting it ready to go, it's an adds a minute. Most of the places you're going to be there won't be inspectors. No, no. So but, what, what the show is doing is educating you on how to do it yourself. Right. You folks aren't going to be do, doing it for them. Well, truthfully, at, at a landing, if we're there, we should not be the ones going through your entire boat. You should be at every landing, whether we're there or not. Okay. In an ideal situation, in four or five years, I expect I'll just watch people do their own inspection and we're in good shape. Yeah. So right now you're kind of in the phase where you're showing them what to do. Oh, absolutely. This is a teaching experience. Yeah. Okay. Good. You know, we're, right. we're not in a fundraising mode where we're trying to give tickets. Right. There are people no. that are that infractious that, no. truthfully, the only way yeah. they're going to learn is that. But for the yeah. most part, very it's rare. really teaching. That's going to be very moment. rare. I think uh, the education is the most important thing right now. And again, you double check when they're raising their motor back up, mm -hmm. double check and make sure your plug is out because you want to get that just like going into the lake where it has mm -hmm. to be in, going mm -hmm. down the road has to be out. Okay. Now you have... Uh, one of your inspectors keeping record here also. Absolutely. Okay. And this is uh, one of our volunteers, which yeah. is wonderful because they help keep all of us safe in the regards of they're looking for traffic, they're making sure that I'm not getting run over, they're not getting run over, the boat owner is in a safe environment mm -hmm. and able to record any information such as when I pulled weeds off, she was writing down that yes, there was removable by hand species. Okay. Um, right. And that way we're able to document what we run across. Mm -hmm. Clearly by mid-July, et cetera, when the weeds are picking up and dead and at the landings, there's going to be much more of that. If the boaters remove that by hand, you know the boat's completely clean for the next place. All right. Now, now we're going to go inside the boat. Well, you can go inside the boat and talk to the fisherman because that's the, okay. or the boater because that's the boater or fisherman. A very, yeah. very valuable. Could be a recreational connection. boat. Absolutely. Not uh, just fishing. Actually, one of the big areas that store <laughs> water is the ballast boats okay. for jet ski or yes. for uh, wakeboarding. Wakeboarding, sure. Now, got any bait? I do. Okay. Okay. Leeches uh, and fish. minnows. Yep. Um, do you know the deal about replacing your water? Yeah. Okay. Do you have Rock spare water? Matter of fact, no, okay, they, uh, the, he said he had some water he that he carried water. from home. He has water. He's brought a gallon from home and it remained in the truck, so it did not go on the lake with him, which is important. If it went on the lake with him, nobody has any idea that it's not lake water. Correct. It remained in the truck, so it's from home. Mm -hmm. Now what he's going to do is he's going to drain out all of his water from the bait bucket and from the leech. Uh, okay, tin. let's do that. Let's show Absolutely. Uh, how pretty simple this is. Yeah, it Isn't takes a big deal. no time. Mm -hmm except for the knot that's tied on that, which is yeah. fun. But almost everybody's fishing from now on will be carrying this, won't they? They should be. Yeah, um, I, if, if they have bait and they want to save their bait. If they want to save it overnight or go to another yeah. lake, you know, it's really simple. It's a, a gallon jug yeah. that you right. just put water in. Now, if you don't want to save your bait, there's another thing you can do. Right. We, at, at many of the landings, there's going to be bait bins okay. where you can dump your bait. But here he's just going to drain his water and replace it. Mm -hmm. And this is right at the landing. This is not take home and do it there. Okay, you can this just pour is it right, right on the landing. Okay. And so once we're the water's at out, again, you're not getting bone dry, but you try to get as much of it yeah. out as possible. They're not going to die in the four seconds there. About 30 seconds here. Yeah. And you've got some live minnows there. Yep. And he has another mm -hmm. batch of water. Mm -hmm. And and if he pours half a gallon huh? in there, look. I can feel the minnows being revived already. Yes, there. they're going to be a lot more <laughs> spunky at this point. Okay. Now, he also had some leeches. Yeah. And okay. Leeches is, also leech is the same thing then. Well, I, I'm a fisherman Here. first. Okay. And when my leeches start to get a little bit uh, unresponsive on mm -hmm. the lake, mm -hmm. I give them fresh water. Well, that's importing water into it. Yeah. So all water has to be drained. It, even on the leech, okay. So even on leeches, and mm -hmm. when you have um, your aerated live wells, mm -hmm. people bring buckets that have an aerator on. 
there, there's a myth, and it is a myth, that you don't have to drain that water. You do have to drain that water and replace it. Okay. Well, this is a good excuse to replace the water in your leeches. Well, and this freshens up the leeches for the next spot anyway. I think a lot of folks go home without doing that, and they got bad leeches and they, well, they die. And then they so. stick it in the fridge, and <laughs> right. um, yeah. Oh, yeah. somebody opens up the fridge and sees <laughs> leeches there. It doesn't always yeah. go over well. Well, that didn't take very long. No, not at all. He I mean, throws them back in the boat, he's ready to thing. go. Uh, many mm -hmm. boats when they're out, especially for an afternoon fishing, mm -hmm. they'll come across and anchor up. Yeah. We need to make sure that the anchor's nice and clean, there's no mud on it, there's yeah. no muck on it, no weeds. And that also goes for the anchor line. Okay. Because, again, it's going to turn around and rip up okay. weeds when you pull it up. Yeah. In this case, it's coiled up. It's mm -hmm. pretty clear that it has not seen the water. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's very fast, very simple. I think this is important because it's very seldom you ever pull up an anchor without something on it. Oh, and, and when you're pulling up the mud, you could be yeah. pulling up faucet snails, you could be pulling up mill foil. You can really get into a bad environment, including zebra mussels will yeah. be on that mill foil or on any weeds. vegetative species. That, uh, oh, absolutely. Okay. And even if it's a native uh, plant, mm -hmm. zebra mussels will attach to that. And now sure. you don't see them, and you're going to transport them to another lake. Yeah. That's not good. Lake Superior is even in doubt here now, isn't it? Lake Superior is not in doubt. Lake Superior has zebra mussels. Zebra mussels. That's so where they were introduced in our area. Yeah, so we're looking at, uh, th th they can live in any kind of water. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't matter if doesn't it's matter. cold or warm. Yeah. It, all of it sure. is in jeopardy. Okay, now we got live wells. So we're just going right. to take a quick peek. Well, and often I, I just yeah. ask, did you catch anything? And often yeah. they'll show. Okay. But it's okay for the fish to be in there, but not in water. Okay. And in this case, that's nice and dry. It's bone dry, so maybe he didn't catch any fish. I see he wasn't fish. successful in fishing. No. Uh, we all have at least days. keeping some, especially within the slot limit, right? And then check <laughs> the other live well as well. Right. They, there could be bait wells in boats. Right. And this one's okay. also bone dry. And so this is what your inspectors do real quick. Go yeah. through all the live wells. I actually, just ask them to open them up. Open them up, and uh, the fish... It's important. They can't be swimming around in there. No, it, actually, transporting fish in water has been against the law for many years. Many years. Um, that that's no news. Best way to to transport fish, in my opinion, is a, a chest full of ice. Take it out. It makes it nice. really simple. Um, now another aspect. He has a couple of fishing rods out here. So you just look on the line itself, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like there's any. Mm -hmm. Spiny water fleas look a lot like eggs. You know, they're, they're going to be clear, gelatinous, mm -hmm. and then if you look very closely, then you can see the spine. But truthfully, just look down the line, and there's nothing on it. This is, in a good case, ready to go. And same with this. There's okay. nothing on it, so that one is completely ready to go down the road. Um, so pretty much you've ended the inspection here oh, we, on the equipment and everything. Absolutely. Is there anything else you ask the owner? Uh, the where, where he's going next. Where are you going next? Okay, so um, that's uh, a question that is Again, asked. just in case we find something in okay. this particular lake, yeah. then we know that there's traffic pattern that goes towards another site. Okay. And that's one of our things. We know that they're not being transported by ducks, etc. It's following road traffic. Mm -hmm. So we just want to know where they're coming from and where they're going to so we can establish a pattern and try and get ahead of yeah. it. This is have a nice day. Oh, thank you very much. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, you're good to head down the road. Yeah. Hey, thank Thanks. You very, much. very good. That's okay. as simple as it gets. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Bill, we've done the inspection. We've done, we've looked at uh, what your crew does. Mm -hmm. You're a county crew. Mm -hmm. You actually get monies from the county to support this, but it's actually state money that's supporting the county. Correct. A lot of this. Okay. Um, and this is going to go on. All summer? Yes, it is. Uh, and with enough funding, I would like to have inspectors out on lakes until they freeze over. Until they freeze over. Until they okay. freeze over, because yeah, we get a, get a lot of hunters out there. This is important then, too. Oh, it sure is. is. Yeah, OK. Sure is. So uh, on an average weekend, how many lakes are being inspected by your crew? We have enough uh, on staff right now to do seven lakes at any given time. Uh, we are still hiring, and as of June 1st, I hope to have another six. So that'll bring us up to 13, if you include me, wow. and that would be 14. So in theory, we can do 14 lakes at any given time, and that includes 
Uh, the first ever mobile thermal decontamination unit. So as you heard Rich talking about, you can, if you want to do it yourself, uh, you can go to a car wash. We will actually have DNR trained and certified people to use 140 degree, 3,500 uh, 3, PSI water to kill uh, all aquatic invasive species. Okay, if you'll move that piece of equipment around to different uh, axes in Ikea County. Yes, County. yes. And uh, when do you expect this? The, the thermal decon unit should be here uh, the end of this week, as a matter of oh, fact. Okay. So, so we're in the June, end of May. 1st, mm -hmm. June 1st, June uh, 1st, we will be out there. Actually, next week is before yeah. June 1st. And there's going to be few boats that you're going to be using this on, I, I, I would imagine. Just the ones that really look like they need some help as far as cleaning up, right? Well, um, the boats that are deemed either that we found AIS that can't be removed manually mm -hmm. or that we suspect are high risk based upon the questions that Jim found for the conversation. Uh, where they where they're coming from and yeah, what it shows. Yeah, exactly. If they're coming from a lake yeah. that has zebra mussels in it, then boom. There, there you know, okay, you should have, you should have a decon. Um, also, it's free, and actually anyone uh, can come up to a thermal decontamination unit that's run by the Itasca County AIS watercraft inspectors, and for free, we can give you a, a, a boat wash. We're not scrubbing your boat down, right. but we will give you a, a courtesy thermal wash on the outside of your boat. We're also doing fishing tournaments, too. We're hoping to be uh, oh, okay. uh, make our presence known uh, a good five days to a week ahead of fishing well, tournaments. Sense, they're coming from all over. That's right, pre-fishing, yeah. absolutely. This is a high pressure system, right? Yeah, but in reality, what we're actually doing is we put a, a, a low flow nozzle on it. So we're basically oh. just kind of like a waterfall, flowing water over the hull of the boat. Uh, 140 degree water, 10 seconds exposure time. That will kill a zebra mussel. Okay, great. Well, terrific. So you got this crew going out, and you've got a lot of these are volunteer people. Is that right? Um, the inspectors are, uh, you have to be employed by the county and you have to be certified for the DNR. So they're not, they're not volunteers. But the volunteers, um, such as Johnny, who was here actually from the Green Heron on, uh, yes. here on Pekegma, um, completely down. a volunteer and it is so helpful. This job, uh, I told everybody this job, you can spend a lot of the time and you think you're the only person on the planet. It, it can be really dull if you can imagine, mm -hmm. not this landing, because this is very, very, very heavy, but there are some landings where you might not see somebody for two hours, yeah. and then you see 10 boats all at once. Yeah. So if you have an inspector there, it, it kind of helps with the, the down times, and it also helps when you have that big crush of people coming in. Are you looking for those types of volunteers? Always. 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 Okay. And I can be contacted, <laughs> um, well, you can look me up on Bill mm -hmm. Grant, but also atasca.ais.coordinator at gmail.com. Okay, just call the county, go to courthouse. They'll, you can call the it. county. Yep, they and all know you me. You have an office there, and that's where you're going to be. Well, actually, uh, my office right now, I'm oh. working out of my house to okay. save money. I'd, <laughs> I, I'd rather put that money yeah. into hiring more inspectors. Okay, but they have uh, they have all the information. Oh, the they sure do. Sure do. Sure do. Okay, this, is, this has been great. Uh, I think people that are uh, interested in the future of their lakes, particularly in Itasca County, they want their kids to be uh, using these lakes as they were, not for some other species that has taken over and they don't have the fish they had years ago. Um, terrific program. Very important, necessary, that's the thing. Absolutely. And uh, I don't think this education is gonna take very long. No, no, it's it's, it's, it's it's common sense yeah. and it's just forming a good habit yeah. and everybody wants to do the right thing. You know, we, we took almost an hour here to go through it. But sometimes it's a it's a four or five minute situation. Absolutely, so and depending upon the risk level that the the, the uh, inspector is trained to realize, yeah. if if it's a higher risk, it takes longer. Okay. So if your boat's clean when you're coming in, you're a lower risk. So yes. okay. yeah. yeah, and we are. Our goal is to not delay anyone. As a matter of fact, it's a state law. We're not Pretty supposed simple. to do that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Grantis. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in, and we're doing this. And uh, my pleasure. We're going to be uh, promoting this all year. Tremendous. And especially with ICTV and uh, watch ICTV to get all this information. And there it is. Here we are. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Just Outdoors. And remember, stay informed. Thank you.